U.S. and Canadian Coast Guards have launched a search and rescue mission after a tourist submersible lost contact on its way down to the Titanic shipwreck in the North Atlantic. It has been more than 100 years since the Titanic went down the depths of the icy ocean, killing more than 1,500 people. But her story of tragedy and triumph continues to resonate and captivate hearts and minds across the globe. In a quest to explore the resting place of the infamous ship, the Ocean Gate Titan submersible embarked on a dangerous expedition to the frigid ocean depths, where the Titanic rests in profound silence. Regrettably, the Ocean Gate Titan submersible, in her pursuit of knowledge, suffered a catastrophic implosion, killing all five people on board, including the founder of Ocean Gate, Stockton Rush, just after about an hour and 45 minutes into the journey to explore the wreckage. Despite many warnings from experts, the company ignored them and continued with the expedition, leading to a catastrophic outcome. Hey there, welcome to Knowledge Ground, the channel where we uncover the captivating stories of extraordinary individuals who have reshaped our world. If you have not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more amazing videos like this. The Ocean Gate Company, founded by Stockton Rush in 2009, is based in Everett, Washington. The company offers tourists the opportunity to explore the depths of the ocean using submersibles. This allows them to get a first-hand view of shipwrecks and underwater canyons. In addition to exploration, these submersibles have practical applications in scientific research. They enable researchers to conduct real-time sampling, collect data, and perform experiments in the deep sea. They are also utilized for deep-sea testing and underwater filming. One interesting aspect is that prior diving experience is not required to join these submersible trips. Anyone above the age of 18 can participate. However, it's worth noting that these experiences come at a cost, with prices for a spot on the trip reaching up to $250,000. At the young age of 19, Rush has been able to achieve the remarkable feat of becoming the world's youngest pilot with a jet transport rating. Over the years that followed, he pursued his academic aspirations, earning a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from Princeton University and an MBA from the Haas School of Business at the University of California, Berkeley. Following several years of invaluable experience as a commercial pilot, Rush embarked on a courageous venture by establishing his very own company, OceanGate. According to a video collaboration with the nonprofit organization, Earth Echo International, Rush revealed that he founded OceanGate after a moment of realization that the deep sea held the potential for exploration and discovery, a territory he had previously associated exclusively with astronauts. During an interview, Rush expressed his profound realization, stating, I had a moment of clarity in my early 40s, where I realized that my true aspiration was to become an explorer. I discovered that the wonders I had associated with space were concealed within the vast depths of the ocean. In another interview with Smithsonian Magazine in 2019, he emphasized the significance of ocean exploration, asserting, we will establish colonies in the ocean long before we do so in space. The company began seeking investment and achieved notable milestones, raising nearly $500,000 in 2014 and an impressive $19.3 million in 2020. OceanGate has built three fleets of submersibles, Antipodes, Cyclops, and their latest edition Titan. In May 2013, OceanGate announced a collaboration with the University of Washington's Applied Physics Lab for a project called Cyclops. This project aimed to develop a new five-person submersible capable of diving to a depth of 3,000 meters. However, the university has since denied working with OceanGate on the Titan submersible, despite an initial press release suggesting their involvement. In a statement, the university clarified that while they initially signed a $5 million research collaborative agreement with OceanGate, only $650,000 worth of work was completed before the two organizations ended their collaboration. As a result of the collaboration, the Applied Physics Lab successfully built Cyclops 1, a steel-hulled vessel designed for dives up to 500 meters. It is important to note that its depth capability falls well below the depths reached by OceanGate's Titan submersible. The university explicitly stated that they were not engaged in the design, engineering, or testing of the Titan submersible used in the RMS Titanic expedition. 
In 2016, Cyclops 1 embarked on an expedition to survey the wreckage of the Andrea Doria, an Italian passenger liner that sank near Massachusetts in 1956, after colliding with the Stockholm, a Swedish passenger vessel departing from New York. The mission aimed to gather valuable information and insights about the submerged wreckage. Additionally, Oceangate conducted a series of four dives to explore the SS Governor, a passenger liner measuring 417 feet, resting at a depth of 240 feet off the coast of Washington, United States. However, it's worth noting that the depth of the Titanic wreckage surpasses that of previous expeditions. According to the information provided on the company's website, Oceangate has completed over 14 expeditions and conducted more than 200 dives across the Pacific, Atlantic, and the Gulf of Mexico. In March 2017, Oceangate announced the upcoming Titanic missions. These missions would mark the first time manned submersibles would be diving into the renowned wreck since 2005. Furthermore, they revealed that individuals had the opportunity to participate in the expedition as mission specialists, with a cost of $105,129 per person. Initially scheduled to commence in 2018, the Titanic expedition faced delays when the company encountered challenges in obtaining the necessary permits for its contracted research support vessel. However, by 2021, as reported by the New York Times, the Titan embarked on a remarkable deep-sea exploration mission to investigate the Titanic wreckage. Since then, the Titan has completed two expeditions to this iconic site of historical significance. The company claimed to have taken 28 people to visit the Titanic wreckage in the past year. The company's progress attracted NASA's attention, and by 2020, NASA had a Space Act agreement with Oceangate. This agreement allowed the two organizations to collaborate on the development, manufacturing, and testing of a carbon fiber pressure vessel for Titan, Oceangate's latest submersible. NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, served as the facility where the development and manufacturing of the pressure vessel was completed. However, NASA did not conduct testing or manufacturing of the submersible itself, this was done by Oceangate. The Space Act agreement between NASA and Oceangate expired in 2022. Nonetheless, the two organizations remain in contact and are exploring future opportunities to collaborate. But throughout these endeavors and achievements, the company encountered several controversies that posed challenges and raised concerns. In January 2018, the company's engineering team upon completion of the craft, named Titan, handed over the responsibility for ensuring the safety of future passengers to a new crew. However, during this period, experts both within and outside the company began expressing concerns, raising alarms about potential issues. After two months, Oceangate found itself confronted with grave concerns expressed by over three dozen individuals including industry leaders, deep-sea explorers, and oceanographers. In a letter addressed to the company's chief executive, Stockton Rush, they cautioned against the company's experimental approach and its choice to bypass a conventional assessment. These experts strongly believe that such a path could potentially give rise to catastrophic issues during the Titanic mission. In emphasizing the importance of safety, David Lockridge, the director of marine operations at Oceangate, highlighted the necessity for extensive testing to mitigate potential risks that passengers aboard the Titan submersible could encounter, particularly in the event of reaching extreme depths. Both Mr. Lockridge and the experts who appended their signatures to the 2018 letter addressed to Mr. Rush emphasized the importance of inspecting and certifying the Titan. However, the company chose not to proceed with the inspection and certification process due to their unwillingness to cover the associated costs. As a response to Mr. Lockridge's warnings, the company filed a lawsuit against him, accusing him of sharing confidential information outside of the company. According to the disclosed documents, Mr. Lockridge discovered that the viewport, which allows passengers to observe the depth of the ocean from inside the craft, was only certified for depths of up to 1,300 meters. This certification fell significantly short of the requirements for voyages to the Titanic, which rests at a depth of nearly 4,000 meters below the ocean's surface. Lawyers representing Mr. Lockridge stated in a court filing that the paying passengers would not be aware and would not be informed of this experimental design. The company in their meeting decided to fire Mr. Lockridge, stating that Mr. Lockridge, who was not an engineer, declined to accept the information provided by the company's engineering team. They further contended that acoustic monitoring of the hull's strength was deemed superior to the type of testing advocated by Mr. Lockridge. They even went further to state that Mr. Lockridge was trying to be fired. 
In response, Mr. Lockridge filed a claim of wrongful termination. In the end, both parties' disputes were ultimately resolved through a settlement reached later in 2018. Still, in 2018, OceanGate received a cautionary message from 38 experts in the field of submersible craft. All of these experts were esteemed members of the Manned Underwater Vehicles Committee of the Marine Technology Society, an industry group dedicated to promoting, studying, and educating the public about ocean technology for over 60 years. In their letter addressed to Mr. Rush, these experts expressed their collective apprehension and unanimous concern regarding the development of the Titan and the proposed missions to explore the Titanic wreckage. In the letter, it was stated that OceanGate's promotion of the Titan had been deemed misleading, at the very least, as the company asserted that the submersible would meet or surpass the safety standards set by the risk assessment firm DNV, despite having no intention to seek formal certification from the agency. Will Conan, the chairman of the committee remarked in an interview, their decision to deviate from classification guidelines was regarded as highly risky. Though they expressed in the letter that although it may require additional time and cost to complete the test, they unanimously believe that the validation process by a third party is a crucial element in ensuring the safety of all occupants of submersibles. According to Mr. Conan, Mr. Rush contacted him after reading the letter and told him that industry standards were stifling innovation. In a 2018 interview, Bart Kemper stated that OceanGate had found a way to avoid certain U.S. regulations by deploying the vessel in international waters, where the rules imposed by the Coast Guard did not apply. Mr. Rush has previously expressed his opinions on the perceived regulatory bureaucracy within the industry. In a 2019 profile published by Smithsonian Magazine, he made what seemed like a controversial remark stating, the commercial sub-industry hasn't experienced any injuries in over 35 years. It's remarkably safe due to the presence of extensive regulations. However, this also means there has been limited innovation and growth within the industry, precisely because of these regulations. According to a CBS report, David Pogue, a former technology columnist for the New York Times, participated in one of OceanGate's Titanic expeditions. He made a shocking reveal that before boarding the Titan, he had to sign paperwork acknowledging that the vessel was classified as an experimental craft and had not received approval or certification from any regulatory authority. The document also highlighted the potential risks involved, including the possibility of physical injury, emotional distress, or even death. In February, Mr. Rush faced another lawsuit from a Florida couple, who alleged that his company declined to reimburse the $105,000 they had paid for a visit to the Titanic aboard the Titan in 2018. According to the lawsuit, the trip was repeatedly postponed, partly due to the company's need for additional tests on the Titan. The couple claimed that Mr. Rush failed to fulfill his promise of issuing a refund, and instead insisted that they join a voyage to the wreckage in July 2021. In a 2022 court filing, the company admitted some technical issues with the Titan during its 2021 trip, stating that during the initial dive to the Titanic, the submersible experienced a battery problem, requiring manual attachment to its lifting platform. David Con Cannon, the company's legal and operational advisor, explained that the submersible incurred minor damage to its exterior as a result. Consequently, OceanGate decided to cancel the mission to conduct necessary repairs. To make things more interesting, the company extended an invitation to federal judge Rebecca Beach Smith, who was presiding over the case, to join them on an expedition. This offer caught the judge's attention and piqued her interest, and she said, perhaps if another expedition occurs in the future, I will be able to do so. In a written statement in May, the judge expressed her thoughts, mentioning that after presiding over numerous cases related to the Titanic wreckage for many years, the opportunity to personally witness the site would be highly enlightening and provide the court with a first-hand, eyes-on experience. Despite the numerous warnings about design flaws in the Titan and the ongoing lawsuits faced by the company, OceanGate persists in conducting its expeditions. On Friday, June 16, 2023, the Titan commenced an anticipated eight-day expedition, commencing from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. The journey began with a 400 nautical mile voyage to reach the wreck site, located approximately 900 miles 1450 kilometers, off the coast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. On Saturday, the Titan prepared itself to submerge towards the wreckage. Among the passengers aboard the submersible was Hamish Harding, a British billionaire and adventurer, who shared his experience on Facebook, stating, 
Due to the worst winter in Newfoundland in 40 years, this mission is likely to be the first and only manned mission to the Titanic in 2023. A weather window has just opened up, and we are going to attempt a dive tomorrow. During the early hours of Sunday morning, the submersible embarked on its anticipated two-hour descent to reach the Titanic wreck, located nearly 4,000 meters below the surface, as indicated by the U.S. Coast Guard. Around an hour and 45 minutes into the descent, the submersible lost communication with the Polar Prince, the support ship responsible for transporting it to the site. The Titan was expected to surface by 7 p.m. that day, but she never appeared. By Monday, the 19th of June, the search and rescue efforts for the Titan submersible commenced. A joint operation involving U.S. and Canadian ships and aircraft swarmed the area, with some deploying sonar buoys capable of monitoring depths of approximately 4,000 meters, as mentioned by U.S. Coast Guard Rear Admiral John Mauger. Additionally, assistance was sought from commercial vessels in the vicinity. France joined the search efforts on Tuesday by deploying the Atalante, a vessel equipped with a deep-sea diving vessel, which was anticipated to arrive late on Wednesday. During the same day, Canadian Lockheed P-3 Orion aircraft, equipped with submarine tracking equipment, detected sounds over several hours. On Wednesday, the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Navy, Canadian Coast Guard, and Oceangate expeditions established a unified command to coordinate the search operation. Later on that day, the U.S. Coast Guard confirmed that Canadian P-3 aircraft detected underwater sounds. As a result, remotely operated vehicle searches were directed to the area where the sounds were detected, and the collected data was sent to U.S. Navy experts for further analysis. That same Wednesday evening, additional vessels, including a French research ship equipped with a deep-sea diving vessel, were scheduled to arrive to assist in the complex response effort. The operation spans an area twice the size of Connecticut, requiring a coordinated and comprehensive approach. The oxygen levels inside the Titan submersible had been expected to last for 96 hours, and by Thursday, it was expected that the submersible had run out of oxygen. The Canadian Navy ship carrying a medical team specialized in dive medicine arrives on the scene that Thursday. On Thursday, further developments unfolded as a debris field was detected within the designated search area near the Titanic wreck. Utilizing a remotely operated vehicle ROV, the 1st Coast Guard District Commander reported the discovery of the Titan sub's tail cone, an associated debris that indicated a catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. The ROV scanning the seabed near the Titanic wreck site, located 400 miles south of St. John's, Newfoundland, identified a substantial debris field comprising five significant sections of the vessel, according to officials. It was later concluded that a catastrophic implosion had occurred during the descent, probably killing all five people aboard the Titan submersible instantly. Later that day, the U.S. Coast Guard held a press conference affirming the death of the five people on board. Among the individuals aboard the Titan submersible was Hamish Harding, a British businessman and chairman of aircraft brokerage Action Aviation, who proudly announced his participation in the Titanic dive on Saturday. Harding is known for his adventurous spirit, having previously traveled to space aboard the Blue Origin flight into the Challenger deep in the Pacific Ocean, the deepest known point on Earth. Joining the expedition was French diver Paul Henri Nargillette, who possesses extensive experience in exploring the Titanic. Nargillet serves as the Director of Underwater Research at RMS Titanic Inc., the company entrusted with exclusive salvage rights to artifacts from the ship. With a biography that includes 35 dives into the Titanic wreck and overseeing the recovery of 5,000 artifacts, Nargillet is highly regarded in the field. Additionally, the Dawood family, consisting of Pakistani father Shahzada Dawood and son Suleiman, were confirmed to be on board the submersible. The Dawood family is well known in Pakistan, managing prominent business enterprises across various sectors such as energy, petrochemicals, fertilizers, IT, and food and agriculture. And lastly, Stockton Rush, an American businessman and the co-founder and CEO of Oceangate Expeditions. Stockton Rush was believed to have been involved in at least 10 expeditions to the Titanic wreck. He led several of these expeditions, and he also participated in others as a passenger. In 2018, he led the first expedition to the Titanic wreck using the Titan submersible. Let's look at the design of the Ocean Gate Titan submersible and why it attracted so much criticism. The submersible, measuring 22 feet in length with a thickness of 5 inches and weighing 23,000 pounds, was constructed using carbon fiber and featured titanium end caps. 
Its design aimed to achieve lighter weight and improved efficiency compared to other deep diving submersibles. The interior of the Titan was minimalistic, lacking seats and only featuring one toilet. Its capacity of up to five passengers meant they had to sit on the floor. The only view of the Titanic was through a porthole, as there were no other windows. Underwater, the Titan relied on text messages to communicate with its mothership since GPS signals and other modern technologies do not function underwater. According to OceanGate Expedition's archived website, the submersible was required to maintain communication every 15 minutes. The last communication with the Polar Prince occurred at 11.47 a.m. on Sunday. Traditional conveniences such as GPS, Wi-Fi, and radio links do not operate in the depths of the ocean. The Titan was propelled by four electric thrusters, two horizontal and two vertical. This allowed it to travel at the speed of up to three knots. The pilot of the Titan steers it, using a modified video game controller. The filmmaker James Cameron, the director of the movie Titanic, said a lot about the Titan submersible after it imploded in 2023. He said that the design of the submersible was critically flawed and that it was only a matter of time before a tragedy occurred. He also stated that the submersible should not have been used for paying passengers that were not themselves deep ocean engineers. As stated by Graham Jones, while carbon composites are extremely tough, they have a limited lifespan when exposed to excessive loads or inadequate design, resulting in stress concentrations. The Titan's hull had experienced repeated stress during previous dives. Each journey would create small cracks in the structure, which might initially be small and undetectable but could rapidly and uncontrollably expand, reaching a critical point. This appears to be the potential cause of the implosion. This also goes to prove the company's complete negligence to maintenance. Even though the Titan had completed numerous dives with this viewport, the company's willingness to take such an unimaginable risk was alarming. So there you have it, we have yet again witnessed the echoing consequences of ignorance. Just as the owners of the RMS Titanic disregarded warnings about icebergs in 1912, could we have witnessed a similar implication of neglect in the case of Ocean Gate? If only they had heeded the warnings, this situation could have been averted. I also send my deep condolences to the affected families. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it, share it, and leave your thoughts in the comments. I would love to learn from your feedback, and if you have not subscribed, please support my small channel by subscribing to it. This will encourage me to make more videos like this. See you next time.